name is Bhaskar Gupta. I'm working as a technical product manager and today I'm going to show you how easy it is to deploy VMware Cloud Foundation in a nested environment using the Lab Constructor. VMware Lab Constructor is an automated tool that deploys an entire nested Cloud Foundation environment onto a single physical host or a vSphere cluster. Lab Constructor can be downloaded from the link mentioned on the screen by filling up the form with necessary details. Here you can see that there are two links mentioned. One is to join the Slack community and the other is to download the Lab Constructor tool. One can seek help from the community for any issues related to the product or deployment. From the other link, you can download the software in your local computer or any repository from where you want to initiate the Cloud Foundation deployment. These are the files which comes along with the software bundle and consist of input files, script, deployment guide and so on. There are two types of deployment based on input file with AVN and the one without. You can select the one based on your requirement. Then you need to modify the input file as per the deployment. Lab Constructor can help in automated deployment without having to change the network details but one still needs to provide the license keys in the input file however i strongly suggest you to go through the deployment guide before proceeding there are certain prerequisites which needs to be met so as to keep the nested environment ready for the deployment let me show you some of the prerequisites For instance, MTU for vSwitch needs to be set up to 9000, trunk port to be configured and promise keys, forge transmits and MAC address change needs to be set up accordingly. This is very crucial and you should spend good amount of time reviewing and configuring the same, as failure to do so may result in unsuccessful deployment of the VMware Cloud Foundation. Let's have a look at the input file and what all needs to be configured. Some of the key input files are the one with AVN and non-AVN deployment which you can see here, others like the ones named as add underscore three hosts and so on. Here is one of the example of non-AVN deployment input file. These are some of the places where you can configure the networking details and as I have mentioned earlier, irrespective of the type of deployment, you still need to provide the license keys for all the components in the input file, without which the deployment would fail. One needs to download Cloud Builder OVA from VMware site as it doesn't come by default with the VLC bundle. For this demo, I have provided all the necessary details in the input file like IP address, DNS, subnet and license keys for non avian deployment. I have opened the PowerShell and browsed the directory where all the files are downloaded and now we'll execute the deployment script. Upon running the script, the PowerCLI versions will be checked and we will be presented with the lab constructor UI screen with different deployment methods like automated, manual and expansion pack. Let me talk about each of these methods now. The first method, automated, it assumes that user will provide the required services as spelled out in the Cloud Foundation documentation. This includes DNS, NTP, DHCP and BGP router. The second method, manual, it means the user wants VLC to provide and configure the required services. VLC will deploy Cloud Builder and inject the additional services mentioned earlier. All necessary configuration inputs for these services are retrieved from the Trajan configuration file for Cloud Foundation. Using this method provides a highly automated end user experience and all required services are deployed accurately within the nested sandbox built by VLC. And last but not the least, the expansion pack. It assumes that the user has already built a complete lab using the other methods above and now they want to add more nested hosts to the existing environment. In this demo, I will be selecting manual deployment where the DNS, NTP, DHCP and all the necessary networking details are pre-configured in the input file. Upon clicking on manual, you will be presented with screen where you need to provide the path for the input file. Based on the input file details provided, the DNS, NTP 
IPs will be populated automatically. We can also see that the DNS, the management gateway and the management CIDR is auto populated based on the input file. Here I'll provide the IP for the cloud builder followed by the location of the OVA file for the cloud builder as I mentioned earlier which I've downloaded from VMware site. Here the host JSON is something is optional you can add it. This is purely based on the requirement where you want to add more host. We'll provide the prefix for the VMs as it's clearly mentioned here the names will be displayed in the vCenter where this nested lab will be deployed. With this we have concluded all the information needed to deploy the VCF nested lab and on the right hand side we have to provide the host or the vCenter FQDN with its credentials so that all the necessary components of the host which are needed will be deployed on that location. We will provide the login credentials for the vCenter. Let's type in the username, password and click on connect. The deployment task can be viewed from the PowerShell window behind. Can keep the windows open throughout the deployment process and in case of any failure in the deployment can refer the same for troubleshooting purpose. Upon connecting the vCenter successfully, the cluster, network and the data store details will be populated. Need to select the designated data store, network and cluster where the nested environment will be deployed. Click on validate and make sure all the checks are passed. Only when all the checks are passed, you will get an option to construct. Click on construct to start the deployment process once you're ready. Validation has been completed and all checks passed as mentioned in VLC login window. Now we'll click on construct to start the deployment. The deployment happens in two phases. First. It will deploy four nested ESXi host as we have mentioned in input file and cloud builder. And then using cloud builder, the rest of the VCF components like SDDC manager, vCenter, ESXi host and NSX manager will be deployed as well. If you come across any error in deploying the cloud builder OVF like the one we see here, then you can manually import the OVF tool in vCenter, deploy the cloud builder and resume the process. Here the hosts are getting deployed and soon we will be able to open up the Bringer process. Let's open up the cloud builder. So here you can see that the Bringer process is going on and the deployment of vCenter is in progress. Uh, this is one point which I wanted to make is that irrespective of this window, if at all if any task goes wrong or it fails. You can still continue the fail task from here uh, without disrupting any of the process and it will continue. Let's have a look at the bring up process to see what all components are being installed. As you can see that the NSXT is getting deployed and the same can be seen from the PowerCL console as well. Once the deployment is completed, we'll be able to log into NSX Manager console page. So the overall deployment progress can be seen from this page as well as it might take some time, hence we will fast forward this video. The Binger process has been completed and all the necessary components have been deployed. The Binger process report can be downloaded from here. Let's open it up. Here the detailed deployment steps with execution time can be seen which gives us a clear picture of all the tasks been executed and the same can be viewed from this console as well. With that, let's log into the SDTC manager and verify the deployment. Upon successful deployment, we should be able to log into this page without any issues. Okay, that's good. 
Now let's click on workload domains. Okay, yes, and the management domain to verify all the services. And click on vCenter to log into the vCenter. Open vCenter. Click on host and clusters. And click on management resource pool. That's where all the components should be deployed. There we are. We have got NSX Manager, SDTC Manager, and vCenter. Well, that's all about the deployment of VMware Cloud Foundation 4.2 in a nested environment using Lab Constructor. Thank you for watching the video.